I equate Nick Namalita, and this is my channel, The Midnight Librarian. Today, I will be talking about my review of Mosquito Land by David Arnold. Now this may seem a little odd just because this book has been out for several years now. Um, it's David Arnold's debut book. It was published in 2015. Um, I remember having it on my radar due to booktube. Um, why am I reviewing it now? Because I have thoughts and they seem to be of differing opinions than anything I've seen on YouTube. It was published back in 2015. This is David Arnold's debut book. This uh, book is following Mim Malone. She's 16 years old and she has moved to the wastelands of Mississippi with her dad and her new stepmom. Finds out that her real mom is sick back in Cleveland, Ohio. And so she ditches school, ditches her new home and her dad and her stepmom and boards a northbound Greyhound bus to go see her mom. Along the way she meets a cast of characters that ultimately and ultimately she ends up having to face some demons that she hasn't been wanting to face and redefines her evaluates how she defines love, loyalty, and sanity. This does have mental health weaved throughout this whole thing but i'm not entirely sure if it was done correctly this from what i've heard has been on several like must read lists for teenagers of divorce of mental health um etc i have my problems with this book um you may have noticed that in my july wrap-up i gave it two stars and i wasn't really sure how to make my thoughts coherent. There was something up with this and I wasn't sure. Ultimately, all I knew was that this book made me feel icky. After reading some reviews that I... After reading some reviews I found that aligned more with how I felt, I got a better sense of how I felt and how to put it into words. One of them being Dr. Reese... Uh, Dr. Debbie Reese, who tends to review books particularly that have indigenous representation within children's literature. I know that Debbie Reese has been kind of a topic of controversy um, among indigenous reviewers, mostly for her calling out Rebecca Roanhorse for not actually being indigenous and digging a lot deeper than I think she should have. That's a whole nother issue. Uh, but Debbie Reese's review of this book I found to be most accurate with how I felt about this book. So like I said, mental health is a huge part of this book. Ultimately Mim is trying to figure out how she wants to view mental health um, because her mom had viewed her mental health one way and her dad viewed Mim's mental health another way and ultimately her dad went out. Um, and in terms of getting the therapist he wanted for her and having her take medication that he had wanted for her as opposed to figuring out what Mim wanted or trying it her mom's way. Ultimately why I'm talking about this book is because I haven't... A lot of the reviews for this book were of course from six years ago, back in 2015, six, seven years ago. But a lot of it had high praise for it and that's what from what I remember when it was popular it had high praise. And so I'm just here to tell you why issues with some of the problematic elements to it. My main issue, so I guess I'll just go and descending or, or like ascending order I suppose. So first of all a lot of the issues that are brought up in this book are really just glossed over. Mim and so and if you didn't know I will be talking spoilers so if you do want to read this or don't want to be spoiled for it then this isn't the video for you. Mim ends up witness ends up finding her aunt after her aunt ends up dying by suicide. Nothing was talked about that other than that happened and it kind of got glossed over and wasn't talked about in terms of how it affects Mim's mental health, how what kind of trauma response she was having in terms of that. Another issue I found was the sexual assault. Um, Mim ends up getting cornered in a bathroom by someone that is also on the Greyhound bus. She ends up nearly getting sexually assaulted to the point where she ends up having a not panic attack with anyone who's wearing the same type of shoes he is. 
um, throughout the rest of the book. Now, supposedly, the romance, uh, or not romance, the love interest in this book, is the only reason why we know that he's a good guy is because he ends up punching this guy in the face when someone else ends up getting sexually assaulted later in the book. Again, wasn't no no talk no real talking about it. It's basically Mim trying to deal with it for herself. Not to mention the love interest who Mim is 16, the love interest is a junior in college, sophomore junior in college, which in my mind is what, 21? Um so and I get I think past the certain like past age 18, I don't really care how old anyone is so long as they're both consenting adults. Mim 16. Would I have seen this differently had I been 16 as well? Probably. But like as an adult I find this problematic and it's kind of handled okay in terms of the love interest doesn't want to be in the same bed as her because he doesn't want anyone thinking anything and ends up letting her down gently because he's older than her but they travel together anyway. Then there's Walt, who is a homeless boy of 16, also 16, who has Down syndrome. He is constantly being compared to a pet. Consistently, Mim and her love interest call him, he's like a pet to us. Or he's constantly being compared to a child, childlike innocence, um, blind innocence. Uh, just like, and they he, constantly kind of talking down to him. Mim ends up lying to him so she can eavesdrop on someone and it just feels weird. At one point the R slur is um, mentioned but again it's, or it's, there's a lot of flashbacks in here of Mim thinking back to moments with her mom and her dad and at one in particular she when she's hanging out with Walt she ends up reminiscing on a neighbor friend that she ends up having who is intellectually disabled and the R word or the R slur is thrown. Mim doesn't know what it means but ends up punching the kid in the face who ends up calling her friend this R word. When she asks her mom what this means her mom doesn't tell her instead she mom her mom tells her it's a nasty word and she praises her daughter for punching the kid in the face. I get that a lot of us just kind of are just not, or like we understand why this is pro like why the R slur is problematic but this doesn't explain to say teenagers now why this is problematic. It just kind of is just this is bad don't do it. Like, you deserve to get punched in the face, then anyone who says it deserves to get punched in the face. I don't feel like that's... I don't think that's solving anything. But yeah, ultimately it was just like, <sighs> Walt is just kind of a character that's there that all, like, what she, spur, like, spouts what she calls Waltisms, which are just these occasional little bouts of wis like these little sayings of wisdom every so often to help push her along in her growth and for some reason she has this uh protective instinct this protective motherly instinct as soon as she meets him and um as as she hangs out with him it's just it's just weird it, to me i am I do not have Down syndrome. I cannot speak for anyone with Down syndrome or with an inte intellectual disability, but this feels weird. Um, to just kind of, one, just immediately comparing someone to a pet. I have been compared to a pet before, particularly a dog. I was pissed. And then to take him to the vet because no doctors are open on a holiday weekend because he has because of issues he had eating something what <laughs> so yeah that all felt icky to me and then like the kicker that i have the problem that i have with this and what i'm finding that i have a problem with some of the reviews is the cultural appropriation a lot of the reviews will say that no this isn't cultural appropriation this is appreciation it's not it cannot be appreciation if you don't understand the meaning behind the practices. Because Mim has mental health issues, she ends up having um, one of her quirks um, is 
to have this favorite lipstick of her mom's and she puts designs on her face and calls it her war paint. But it's okay because she's Cherokee. She's 1 16th Cherokee and I quote, who isn't? And we get another flashback of when she finds out that she's Cherokee, ends up and <laughs> finds out that she's 1 16th Cherokee, has an understanding of blood quantum and wants to be more authentic so bumps it up to a quarter Cherokee. And Bri like talks about it at school to the point where the school wants to give her a Native American Appreciation Award. When it is told to her mother, her mother starts cracking up laughing. It's not explained why her mom laughs and it's kind of implied that this is wrong but throughout the rest of the book she calls herself the chiefess. And explains away the war paint because she's Cherokee who gives a shit. Dr. Reese, Dr. Debbie Reese ends up explaining it a whole lot better than I think I can and I will link her review down in the description down below but ultimately this is hugely problematic it doesn't matter um it's just it's just overall really problematic it's stereotyping just further stereotyping and misrepresenting it doesn't matter that it's Cherokee it could be Salish, it could be a Pueblo, it doesn't matter. You put anyone in there, it's not going to be good. And the fact that people are putting in reviews going, it's appreciation, not appropriation. Trust me, I worked with Native Americans seven years ago. It's not okay. <laughs> I am one indigenous person of the Yurok people. I cannot rep speak for everybody. I will not speak for everybody. I have my own thoughts and experiences much like every other all the other indigenous peoples nations and tribes in North America and the world <laughs> but this was so frustrating Debbie Reese ends up talking about how like I said ends up explaining it a whole lot better than I ever could but basically ends up saying that okay so Mim has some concept of blood quantum which a lot of nations, uh, tribes, and people within the United States in particular use in order to um, gauge enrollment. It's, in my mind, a fucked up system made to eventually, to so that indigenous peoples don't exist because blood gets diluted, right? Um, but it's also just to the point of like, yeah, anyway, that's a, another whole thing. But Arnold doesn't get, so Mim and therefore Arnold has some kind of notion of blood quantum. However, not of the Cherokee Nation because Cherokee Nation doesn't use blood quantum for enrollment. It uses descendancy. So <laughs> there's also a bunch of proverbs that Arnold ends up throwing in here that Reese ends up questioning where they came from. In particular, a lot of reviews that I found that were really frustrating were people talking for indigenous people saying that, kind of waving off the war paint because it's helping a teenager with mental health and saying that, oh, because of that, indigenous peoples would find it fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with Debbie Reese in terms of, okay, what about na indigenous teenagers who have one of the highest rates of suicide within the United States? Not that this book is a direct correlation, but what is, is misrepresentation, which this book is. The fact that people use, oh, it's okay, I'm this much of this tribe so I can wear a war bonnet or wear war paint is not okay. And that's never explained in here, which to me is not okay. So, and the fact that so many people are saying that this is a great book, even, or like, that they're finding it decent, that it's a ripoff of John Green, whatever. I just, the fact that no one's talking about how this is cultural appropriation, that these characters uh, with disability, like the disability representation, um, the sexual assault representation, because uh, there was some weird quotes about that as well. It's just overall this book is so frustrating to me and I don't understand how nobody spoke up about it on YouTube so here I am. And ultimately this was just 
no so with all that it's even more frustrating because the whole time we know that there's this tension between Mim and her father that she never felt like he understood her and that he wasn't listening to her um the same with the stepmother that never it never come like that's just left it's she her stepmom ends up picking her up and takes her to visit her mom she sees the mental health issues that her mom has and decides for herself that she is done taking pills and throws her pills out the window and from what I understand I don't know if it was a trend in 2015 for to be for YA's to be anti um, medication but the fact that she goes ahead and does this without a second opinion without like any concept of like it's just it's so pro how is this this isn't good this is not good I don't understand so yeah and the fact that she doesn't ever talk to her father about some of her problems um is frustrating <laughs> it's all very frustrating I don't understand yeah that's that's that book that's that book I it's um yeah that's that that's my rant for that book um but yeah debbie reese's review will be down in the description down below i also read another review that i'm hoping i can find that i will link down there that talks about the disability representation in general just the flow of it too was just really weird it was like a very much and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened and to the point where some of it didn't seem real until we went on to the next thing like for instance the bus ends up flipping someone ends up dying but it was so she was so much in her min was so much in her own world that like i thought it was a dream until she was in the hotel being compensated um a compensated hotel from the Greyhound and is continuing with the Greyhound and it's like oh that person actually died and we're just gonna okay we're moving on I guess so it was very much we're glossing over a bunch of these things we're not gonna talk about what problems they cause that we're not gonna have a solution to them we're also just not gonna talk about any of these problematic elements so yeah that yeah so that's my view on that book if you yeah that's my review on that i hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading and i will see you in another video very soon Shoo.